So everyone knows how MOSFETs work, right? For NMOS case, you apply a voltage to the gate, you have your drain biased higher than your source, and BAM! A channel opens up and you got current. But in this presentation, we're going to focus on tubes. There are two main parts to a vacuum tube, the anode and the cathode. The cathode is heated to high temperatures using a small filament, and the anode is biased to an extremely high voltage. For example, 400 volts is a very common bias point for audio situations. The consequence of doing so is an electron flow from the cathode to the anode. The reverse is not possible because of the heated cathode, which can be compared to the operation of a diode. The gain comes into play with the addition of the component known as the grid. The grid is a metal plate which sits in between the anode and the cathode. The grid has the power of modulating the electron flow between the cathode and the anode based on its negative biasing with respect to the cathode voltage. The grid voltage induces an electric field which interferes with the electron flow. As the voltage of the grid becomes more negative, the flow of electrons decreases, and as the voltage is made less negative, the flow increases. These actions result in transconductance, or more simply, small signal gain. So we're going to compare a tube and a solid state device, both meant for high power and have the same specifi specifications to show the advantage of tubes. The first major advantage to using tubes instead of transistors is linearity. A very important point to note is the third order intercept point. For the tube amp, it is push pushed much higher than the transistor, which contributes to a more linear operation. Even though a tube and a solid state device have identical 1 dB compression points, the characteristic is much different. The tube amplifier has a much more leisurely curve, whereas the solid de state device curves sharply. The end result can be shown here, where it's clear that the solid state device saturates much earlier than the tube. Because of this, tubes are much more sought after for their linearity. The tube amplifier also provides a higher efficiency at around 50 to 60 percent, whereas the solid state power amplifier only ranges from about 25 to 30 percent. This is quite a large margin, especially when power consumption is critical, like in satellite transponders. Reliability in such situations is also critical. The failure rate for high power solid state devices is about 15% higher than that of tubes in similar conditions. As it can clearly be seen, vacuum tubes are very bulky, which makes them much less suitable for portable products such as music players and cell phones. Tubes also require higher operating voltages and have high power consumption. This is because of the heater supply used to operate the tubes. Glass tubes are also much more fragile than transistors. Cathode electron emitting materials are used in operation, among other materials, giving the tube a much higher manufacturing cost than equivalently powered transistors. Tubes are high impedance devices needing impedance matching transformers for low impedance loads, like speakers. Solid state transistors are much more versatile than vacuum tubes, as they have large variances in parameters like gain and threshold voltages. These parameters can also be varied considerably, considerably with biasing and temperature. Overall, solid state devices have really pushed technology forward. We're now able to have things like cell phones and iPods and laptops, which are all lightweight, compact, and have amazing battery life now. Solid state has really been the driving force behind everything. The processors, the memory, the signal processing, we're now able to fit hundreds of millions of transistors onto something the size of a quarter. Could you imagine trying to recreate something as small as an iPod, but with tubes? Your iPod would be more like iRadio Shack because you'd be able to fill an entire house just with tubes alone. Even though the use of tubes in technology has been almost nil since the 1960s, tubes are still in use today. Tubes still remain dominant in high power communication transponders like in terrestrial and satellite radio transmissions. In terrestrial TV, FM radio, the output power reaches levels above the 10,000 watt mark and into the hundreds of watts for satellite transmission. The best place to look for tubes today is in guitar amplifiers. There's the traditional all tube amp, but in today's demand for cheap, high quality product, there's the modern spin on the tube amp. This is typically given the name of a hybrid amplifier. In a hybrid amplifier, tube amplification circuits are used in conjunction with solid state amplifiers to give that unmistakable tube tone.